So, hi Lucas. Congratulations hi, yeah. on the 720. It's really, really amazing that you were able to get that in just a month, right? That 20 point improvement. Uh, how about you just introduce yourself to everyone who's watching and tell them a little bit about who you are and where you're from. Great. Okay. Thank you uh, for the congratulations. <laughs> it was a really hard, hard work. So I'm, I'm Lucas. I'm from Argentina. Uh, I'm an industrial engineering engineer uh, here, I studied in Argentina. And I worked in the oil and gas industry for four years and now for over a year working in a consulting firm on the pharma and healthcare space. Um, and well, uh, as many of you that you're probably watching this video, my dream is, is to be able to get an MBA in, in one of the top schools in, 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 in the United States or, or Europe. <laughs> so that's why I, I, I had this journey uh, for the for, to aim to a, a top uh, score at, in the GMAT. Great. And I'm so glad that I could be part of that journey, right? A uh, little bit of getting you to that top school. So I know that I helped you get to a 720 and we at eGMAT helped you get to that 720, but you actually already took the GMAT once before. Can you kind of uh, tell us a little bit about that story? How did you actually get into the GMAT space and what was your first GMAT experience like? Yes, so first I started studying on my on my own uh, with the uh, official guide, uh, the official guide and official questions. I also had access to to another another platform uh, that that I used, mm -hmm. and I was already very strong in in quant uh, because of my engineer engineering background. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but still, I I studied like for uh, one and a half two months uh, on my own and with this other platform. And from the beginning, after those two months before sitting for the exam, uh, I, I barely saw any, any improvement. I, I, I was really struggling uh, uh, to get the hard questions, especially in verbal and sentence correction, right, correct. Um, and, 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 and I mean, and that's it. I, I, I saw very, very little improvement from, from where I started. Till I till till after those two, those two months, I, I wasn't following any specific structure. I was just practicing questions, reading different uh, um, posts in GMAT Club. Uh, so well, I said, okay. Uh, I had a friend that was did very good in the GMAT by by following this approach, uh, and I said, okay, I'll give it a try, and I got this 700, which of mm -hmm. course was. Not, not bad, it's a, it's a good score, but not what I was expecting. Mm -hmm. I was in, in for a higher score. Um, and well, in my ESR um, report, I got very, very weak in, in, in the verbal section, specifically in, in the sentence correction. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I came out of that exam disappointed. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So then how did you kind of channel that disappointment and how did you, I think it's after that, that you entered EGMAT, right? So how did you find exactly. out about EGMAT? What drove you here? So of course, after sitting for the GMAT, mm -hmm. it's a very stressful exam. I took some weeks off and started talking with different other, other people that I knew mm -hmm. to see how they had prepared. Mm -hmm. And I came across Magdalena. She's a, a very close friend from college here in Argentina. And she told me about Ijimat. Uh, she's a wonderful student. Uh, she's so so smart. She got 780 uh, in the Ijimat by following the full uh, Ijimat course. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought, I mean, I, I'm struggling on sentence correction. Uh, I, I had mainly a verbal. I had to to focus there. And and I also read several posts in Ijimat Club uh, supporting Magdalena's uh, comments mm -hmm. on that around Ijimat and specifically in the in the verbal course that was very 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 good so i gave it i gave it a shot mm -hmm. uh, and and started with the gym uh, after some weeks uh, i started and did the whole uh, uh, sentence correction course mm -hmm. uh, that was great i i i think the meaning based approach for 
for everyone that's trying to figure out the GMAT, the GMAT the sentence correction, uh, with the meaning-based approach, mm -hmm. you can get 90% of the questions correct. And the last 10% would still be some grammar uh, rules uh, and, and idioms, but really, really, if you get the, the meaning-based approach, that's, that's it, it's something that I, I didn't use at all at the beginning. I just was looking for splits, looking for grammar mistakes. And, and it's all about uh, uh, getting the meaning right uh, from, from the first choice or inferring the right meaning in case that, that uh, it's not the intended meaning in, uh, clear in the, in the first choice. That would give you a, uh, and, it requires, and it requires a lot of discipline and practice to get it. It's not easy. Uh, yeah. uh, so I think that the sentence correction course covers all that. Um, and in GMAT and, and it's great. Yeah. Great, I'm really glad we were able to help you. I think people also don't uh, realize the value of focusing on meaning with SC because when you say sentence correction, like you said, it's very easy to think it's just grammar, 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 but falling back on that meaning-based approach can be very valuable for the kind of question that the GMAT poses at you. Exactly, yeah. So after that, uh, I, I I thought okay I did well in in quant mm -hmm. I did fairly well in CR and RC I got like seventy something percentiles in those so mm -hmm. I said I I, I I could be okay mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. then I, I started doing the mock exams uh, mm -hmm. in, in in your platform and I wasn't I I like I got seven thirty one then I got mm -hmm. six ninety I was really uh, going up and down. Mm -hmm. And then something magical happened that I got a, <laughs> an email I, 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 from Payal yeah. and a message in LinkedIn from Payal too. Uh, and I was like, this is Payal? Like I saw her in every video, like she was the, the founder of Ijima. It's, it's really her. I mean, it must be a bot. I, I, was, I, <laughs> I was really doubting. And no, I, it was really her. Uh, that, exactly, Payal. That, yeah. yeah. <laughs> She was. Uh, she she does some uh, part of his work. She does a screening of, of the students in Ijima, and she noticed that I wasn't following a a, a mm -hmm. structured path. That I did a very very well in in sentence correction. That I did my cementing, and I was achieving a ninety almost ninety percentile uh, in sentence correction. But that I wasn't following a correct approach on on the other part of part of the test, mm -hmm. and that's why I was suffering in the mocks, like ups, ups and downs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there is where I got to meet you, Rida. I was offered this, <laughs> the, the mentorship program, uh, like yes. a last mile program that's a, a very a great. Uh, I, I was just one month from my, from my exam date because I had a, a, a planned holiday uh, already. Mm -hmm. All everything paid. I couldn't. I couldn't change it. I didn't want to change it either because it's absolutely the, the GMAT was <laughs> really stressful. I needed to rest. Uh, hundred percent support. As you mentioned, I hundred percent support that decision. <laughs> yeah. And and well, I got introduced uh, to Rida and uh, by Payal and to this um, uh, mentorship program. I I. I also at the beginning was 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 doubting a little bit. It's like I never seen this before in the other platform that I use. I never got like some uh, direct uh, instruction from anyone, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and I was okay. Uh, I, I I will go for it. Uh, and then I started getting a lot of emails from Rida, videos from Rida explaining how what to do, what not to do, uh, talking about my my scores, my data, my my identify my unique weaknesses. Uh, identifying my strengths and complementing them, cementing them, uh, of course, uh, to make sure those those were strengths. And and well, having that uh, detailed plan for the last mile mm -hmm. uh, allowed me, of course, to go more confident in into the exam. And I think it was also key to 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 get my score. Uh, and it was a, a, a very, very, very good experience too. I'm so glad. I'm so, so glad, Lucas, that I could be part of that experience. And you were an absolute 
wonder to mentor, quite frankly. You know, as you said, um, when we were talking before, you'd made that comment about mentorship and how you really have to kind of throw yourself into mentorship mm. full force. And I think that's really also the trust that we had in each other that yes, you would follow, you would give me the feedback on the plans that I gave you and your trust in me that I would be guiding you in the right way. I think given that time crunch, given the paucity of available time, that trust and that reciprocated effort from both ends is really what kind of helped you get to where you wanted to be. So again, all of this is your hard work. I was just a little bit of a guiding hand, but I will, I'm, I will always be very, very happy to have been that guiding hand for you. Yeah, but you, but you need it for the GMAT because the GMAT is not not uh, any other exam you just need that you would just need to study memorize 10 pages 20 pages or 20 formulas it's a very different exam and you need a structure to tackle it if you don't follow a structure 99 percent of the people won't be able to success there, there will be someone of course that <laughs> may but uh, uh, most of us need a structure need a plan need a coursework uh, mm -hmm in order to, of course, get to a 94 percentile or, or higher, that's very challenging. Absolutely, absolutely. It's really, really challenging. And I think when I came in, when I gave you that structure, one of the first things I had you do is actually go back to the basics, right? With master comprehension. So exactly. <laughs> how, did that, how did that feel? That you'd already done SC by that point, you'd already reached the 90th percentile there. And I came in and I told you, you know what? Before you move forward, we need to get those basics down. So what? Uh, how did you feel about that with the master comprehension course? Exactly. So the master comprehension, I mean, I, I studied in a, in a in English school, so I've learned English from very little. Uh, and the master comprehension uh, course at the beginning may seem a little bit basic, mm -hmm. so I dropped it. Uh, and uh, when, yeah, when I started the sentence correction, I dropped it and then uh, you came and told me, no, you need to 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 do it, uh, do it uh, diligently, absorb the, the the knowledge from there, uh, and it was okay. I mean, I'm on into the mentorship. Uh, I need to trust uh, these people. These these people study for for to make us uh, thrive in the in the GMAT. So I went and 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 did the master comprehension course, and that allowed me. I think that. It was it, it was key to allow me first to mm -hmm. to get to 95 percentile in in sentence correction to mm -hmm. get full uh, meaning of of the sentences on how to read on how to pace um, it it in and also of course it helps a lot for RC and CR2 mm -hmm. uh, so uh, getting getting the basics. Um, it's it's also very very important. Although at the, at, it may seem dull, when you finish, you see how different. Then you go and read the questions and read the, the passages. You see, oh, uh, <laughs> this worked. <laughs> uh, so really valuable uh, too. I'm super glad, right? And I think after you completed uh, master comprehension, right? I, then I allowed you to kind of move forward and move into CR. And CR, yeah. that was also somewhere where you kind of had to shift the approach that you used as well, if I'm not wrong, right? Exactly. So CR, I was already doing good um, mm -hmm. uh, with the uh, ECA and medium questions mm -hmm. uh, because those really don't try to, to trick you. I was getting the reasoning well, try identifying conclusions and premises. But I was failing in the medium hard and hard questions. Mm -hmm. And with the pre-thinking approach, mm -hmm. I got to tackle those questions without any doubt. Uh, mm -hmm. Because uh, the pre-thinking approach, um, when you get the medium hard and hard questions, you, it's where you get the, the uh, several choices that seem correct, mm -hmm. but because they are there to trick you. And with the pre-thinking appro approach, you um, you can cross out those those cho choices uh, without any uh, any doubts because uh, it's what when we when, when you pre-think you will see your probably your your answer choice your, 
in uh, your choice in, in in their answer choices mm -hmm. and you will with the other ones you will you will see oh this one may be correct but it's not aligned with my pre-thinking so mm -hmm. that's there to trick you and yeah. and that, that solves it solved it all for me in the in the c in the cr uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, part so that's great so it was really able to kind of give you that clarity that was missing before for those medium hard and harder questions it allowed you to lock in on that answer choice really really quickly exactly right. exactly yeah um, and then i think that's yeah, when then, yes yes then i i i switched to to uh, reading comprehension mm -hmm. uh, to the reading comprehension part uh, there i was already running short time uh, yes. on i started running short time on uh, on my test date i was already thinking oh i still have to to go through through some quant that i haven't touched on on, on several weeks or one month i don't know how much how long <laughs> <laughs> at least a month uh, at least a month yeah, yeah yes uh, so i i acknowledge i i rushed a bit on that course i also uh, reading comprehension is something that i struggle with um keeping focused on 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 on, on long passages uh, getting getting the authors uh, in intent meaning mm -hmm. uh, but uh, at least with the with the reading course i i got some tools that i wasn't using like trying to infer what the 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 author uh, was will say afterwards try get deeply engaged in the passage mm -hmm. um, in, in the inferring the meaning questions, trying to also rethink that I wasn't mm -hmm. doing. And also, last but not least, very important, if you get one five word or uh, um, written down note on every paragraph, then the 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 author intent intention question mm -hmm. or, or the, of the whole paragraph of the whole passage, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, that kind of questions come up to you very easily. Mm -hmm. uh, so I never took any notes. It's like I was saying, no, I don't have enough time. Uh, but then you just go back to the to the passage a lot, and and when when you get the you almost get that question, what was the author's intention? Mm -hmm. uh, you you just read your three sentences and you say, oh, it's this, and also helps a lot. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm actually really like delighted to kind of hear from your experience with RC is that you didn't just mention reading comprehension skills. You use the word pre-thinking and you use the word meaning, right? So it's like you carried those skills that you'd already learned in SC, exactly. in CR, into RC, right? So it's very, it's very important, I think, that you don't see these, um, that you didn't see these you know, three subsections as in isolation from each other. You could absolutely pull those skills moving forward. Exactly, exactly, totally. Uh, and and I know that that's the order of uh, that uh, how you suggest to to mm -hmm. follow the course. I will start. Oh. Oh no. Oh, Lucas, the inevitable has happened. Oh, no. Hi. Uh, Are you back? Hi. Yes. Back. <laughs> I think it was inevitable. It I think happens. it was meant to happen. Yeah. You know, we, we were forewarned <laughs> through our pre uh, through our conversation. But uh, I think I, we, I kind of lost you at, um, you know, you were saying yes, that Yes, these are absolutely things that you should carry forward. I think that's where exactly, hmm. exactly. everything's connected, and I, you should you should follow the 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 recommended pathway for for the verbal section. I think I, because of my time constraint, I I didn't practice enough in the reading comprehension. I had to practice more passages to apply what I learned. Uh, that's why I, maybe I couldn't reach a high percentile uh, score there, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but still, uh, I mean, the course uh, was great and provided me those tools that I, that I didn't have. 
I'm really glad to hear that. Mm. And I think once you finished RC is when the time crunch really hit us because yes. you had two weeks and the entirety of Quant to kind of prep for. So I think it was about the first or second of June and you took your exam mid, mid June for uh, everyone who doesn't know. And that's when, you know, you were we were like, okay, we have to speed run through Quant. This is going to be a bit of a roller coaster. So uh, can you kind of walk people through the approach that we took for Quant, given that you were on a positive of time? Yes. So um, first of all, I will suggest everyone the GMAT, the best approach is do it with time, uh, no time constraint, try to plan for it months. I try to 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 <laughs> beat the system and say I can do it in less. No, no, I don't recommend that. But well, for Quant, we we the platform has a very useful tool that I, I think is called Pace. Uh, yeah. Pace. That you do some diagnostic quiz at the beginning of each section, and that determines your strengths and saves you time from some uh, uh, courses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So first, um, I remember that you asked me to cement some of my strengths, uh, strength uh, uh, areas, uh, section, subsections, mm -hmm. uh, uh, given all the, all the practice that I did, uh, I think, in the, in the mock exams before. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, go and do the course for the one from my weaknesses that I think was a uh, number properties, geometry and and one other section. But the, 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 the thing is that I had only two weeks uh, and one course is, is, is long, you need, you need time. And, and of course, in my weaker areas, the pace wasn't saving me uh, a lot of time. Uh, because those were my weaker areas, I I, I needed to really uh, study for them, mm -hmm. and and well, we I, I, I we tried our best. That's not the the ideal scenario. You should take uh, all the time you need. Um, I also think I didn't do a, a very good exam on the exam date on the quant section. Mm -hmm. I did a very good mm -hmm. exam on the section, but not on the quant side. I actually had a better score on the first my first exam, mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's also things that can happen. Uh, it's an it's an exam, uh, and and depends on on how how you you are that day. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> uh, true. But still, uh, but still, I got uh, uh, I at at least I got back uh, to almost as, as I was before with the, with the Quant course. And I think it's great, to, uh, it's a great course, you, but you need time to do it correctly. Uh, sure. as, as I did the, the, verbal, the verbal course and that really helped me improve uh, mm -hmm. uh, a lot. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I know that you're saying that you didn't have a lot of time, but this is what I want the audience to know, how much you kind of put in the effort in the con con course as well, right? Despite the fact that you were working full time, right? Which is something that people need to know. In those two mm -hmm. weeks, you were working full time. So you were only able to give some amount of time on your weekdays. You still completed the entire number properties course, right? You were able to figure out and we were, we were able to figure out and work out on your weaknesses for W were broad problems in algebra and for geometry, we had, I think, just two days to prepare. Mm. And we came up with a very, very structured approach to just identify the biggest weak areas, tackle them, and whatever is left, it's okay, we move forward. So given that paucity of time, did we beat the system? No, maybe not. But I think we put up a very, very good fight. So, yes, yes. so hats off to you, really. Right? Okay. So hats That's off to you. Right. So, all of this being said, you know, you've had quite the roller coaster of a journey right from the beginning all the way to the end. What do you really have to say to people who are looking to get into the GMAT, whether it's their first time, whether they're retaking? If you were speaking to Lucas from a couple of months ago, what would you say? Well, first, 
I, I wish I, I would have known Ijim at, at the beginning <laughs> and I would have started with the full full course because as I said, you should, you need time. Like the best way is to take time, to take three to four months. Uh, don't feel you're a superhero and, and, and that you can beat the GMAT on your own. Yes, you will have one friend out of a hundred that maybe could do it, but uh, it's very, very, very tough uh, exam and you need discipline and a coursework to beat it. It's not just some study that it won't work. Um, so first, first that, um, and then um, because if it is an a so specific exam with specific rules and tricks and things that you need to figure out, that you need to throw in yourself to 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 the course. I mean. You shouldn't come and say, "Oh no, I don't like. I don't think this that the course what's teaching me is okay. I don't like the meaning-based approach or whatever." No, you need to trust them. I mean, these people uh, study for this. They they have a lot of data from a lot of people. They know how, how what works, what doesn't work, and and I tell you this because I you may get a little bit. Uh, uh, not, not trust at the beginning because it's something different for you and mm -hmm. changes for everyone uh, tough <laughs> oh, but so really hard. yeah so but really uh, trust trust the course follow it uh, step by step um, is there to help you it will change your mind you will see after the course how you get I mean I, I, I was amazed when I, I got the sentence correction questions at the beginning, I was really struggling. I, oh, is this, is not. After a course, I almost didn't have to put any effort. It's all like, oh, it's B, it's C, it's I. <laughs> and, and, and well, uh, that, take, take your time, uh, follow, uh, follow the complete course and, and, and trust, uh, trust, trust the experts. Uh, one thing I want to point out uh, mm -hmm. out of Ijima, because as I mentioned before, I also mm -hmm. used another platform, how uh, uh, Ijima, at least uh, compared to this other platform, has a coursework uh, that's very important. Everything is connected with each other in every section. Absolutely. Everything has a purpose. Uh, it's not just random videos showing you what's uh, perfect past tense or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's a, a much better approach in my opinion. And also, I would also like to point out um, how deeply engaged uh, the tutors and the mentors and well, even Payal, like uh, you, Rida, are involved with the students. I didn't see that uh, anywhere else. Mm -hmm. that they contact you, they email you, they, uh, well, they make videos for you explaining, identifying your weaknesses, uh, everything. And they, their, their mission is to get you to a high score. Uh, uh, and and it, it, you really, I mean, I really notice it. And, and that speaks very good of the people behind the, the scene. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Really. Thank you so much, Lucas. We really, we really, really try for every student who writes to us, for every student who's on our platform, that they have the best chance for success. Because we know how valuable this GMAT score is. And we are 100% dedicated to your success, completely. Right? But I see this, But Lucas, it was amazing having the chance to speak to you today. And I'm sure Everyone who's listening has also really gained a lot of valuable input from everything you've had to say. So thank you so, so much. And again, congratulations on the wonderful score. Thank you, Ria. Bye-bye. <laughs>